Welcome to my series on treating the upper face with toxin. I want to share with you some interesting case studies, some of my experience of treating this area a lot over the years, looking at some nice literature which has definitely helped to inform my practice uh, over the years, allowed me to get better and improve as an injector. And I want to share these things with you, all the perils, all the pitfalls, uh, and try and make you as good as you can be. Okay, so. I want to take a really deep, detailed dive into the glabella, the muscles of frowning, thinking about deeper, uh, specifically muscle anatomy, relating that back to surface anatomy, so what we see at the surface versus what's happening underneath, in order to inform our practice in terms of injection points with toxin, um, and relate that back to some nice literature which has really informed my practice over the years to give the results that my patients want. Okay, so the glabella. Let's start with the basics. What is the glabella? So the glabella is really the medical term for the area above the nasal bone between the eyebrows. That's really what the glabella is. And what we're interested in in terms of toxin injections is muscle anatomy in this area. So there are really, uh, two muscles uh, of concern for us, so the procerus muscle uh, is really the first, this is the sort of pyramidal shaped muscle found in the midline, whose origin is the fascia just above the superior part of the nasal bone. Its insertion is onto the visible forehead, slight variation here, uh, where it interdigitates with frontalis on the lower portion of the visible forehead. Uh, its function is to draw the brows inferior and medially and, and allows us to make a frown. So this is one of the muscles of frowning. Then the other muscle uh, of key importance in, in terms of frowning is corrugator supercilli or known more simply as the corrugator. So there are a pair of corrugators, so one on each side, one on the right, one on the left. And in terms of anatomy, a little bit more complex in terms of its, you know, when you think about, and we compare that to Procerus. So where is the corrugator specifically? So its origin is on the supraciliary ridge or the supraorbital ridge, which is the part of the medial portion of the orbital bone. Uh, and its origin is there, deep on the bone, and it, from that point, traverses laterally, really across um, the eyebrow, as it were, before inserting very superficially in the skin, in and around the region of the mid portion of the brow. And this is subject to a little bit of variation, uh, person to person, but on average, that's where we're gonna find it. Um, in terms of this course traversing laterally, coming more superficially and starting to run through the other fibers uh, of muscles that you're gonna find in terms of muscles of face expression in the upper face. So specifically orbicularis oculi and frontalis. So starts deep to those before becoming more superficial, inserting in the skin in and around the mid portion of the brow. Function of the corrugator is again to bring the brows inferior and medially, allowing us to make the expression of a frown. Okay, so in terms of Procerus and injections with toxin, the most common practice is to inject Procerus closer to its origin. So remember, its origin is the fascia just above the, the um, superior portion of the nasal bone. So it's really it's close to the origin where we want to inject. And, and that really makes good, good practical sense because remember, the insertion of Procerus is, is obviously more superior to that where you're onto the visible forehead, interdigitating with frontalis. We, we wouldn't want to inject closer to its insertion because what we don't want to do is inadvertently have an effect on frontalis. And I do think sometimes uh, some practitioners end up going a little bit too high and you can end up with a medial brow ptosis because of inadvertent effect on toxin on fibers of frontalis. So we definitely want to be closer to the origin uh, and this is very straightforward. In terms of practicalities, you want to ask your patient to make a frown, look at Procerus bulging forward just above the nasal bone, make your injection point just at the lower end of that bulging forward and inject your toxin. We want to be deep, 
you know, just above the periosteum um, and go from there. And I think that's the most straightforward, safest, most reliable way to inject Procerus. Okay, so uh, in this video, I really wanna get very specific, very detailed um, about the corrugators. So a very simple, small muscle uh, in the upper face, but has its complexities. And I really wanna take a deep dive into into specifics of anatomy in terms of deeper anatomy and how that relates to surface anatomy has an effect on our injection points and technique to maximize outcomes while minimizing complications. So when we think about uh, the corrugators, there's a very nice study from 2007, which was published in the world renowned Journal of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery, uh, where they looked very deeply at cadaver specimens and looking at average distances of origin of the corrugator, insertion of the corrugator, relative to static points. Um, and in, 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 in very specific terms, uh, the static point of, of sort of most concern in this study is the nasion, which is a point which never changes. It's not like the brows, for example, where in, in different individuals, you know, brows can, can look and, and be tweaked slightly differently. We want to use a fixed point in order to maximize our accuracy. So you think just like, what, what is the nasion? So the nasion is the indentation just above the superior portion of the nasal bone below the frontal bone. That's what the nasion is. And when we look at this study, which interestingly, uh, one of the co-authors of this study was Ashkan Gavami, very well known uh, Beverly Hills based facial plastic surgeon um, who did some of this work along with some of his colleagues back in 2007 in the early part of his career. Okay, so let's look at this first image uh, where if you look at this point just above the superior portion of the nasal bone, below the frontal bone, the nasion, which is marked with an N in this image. Um, and look at the average distance between this fixed point, the nasion, and the inferior portion of the medial corrugator. So average distance between the nasion uh, in the midline and the most inferior point of the corrugator origin is 9.8 millimeters, so roughly one centimeter. And from that one centimeter, from inferior to superior, or caudal to cephalic, once we get to that point, where it begins relative to the midline is 2.9 millimeters, so roughly three mill millimeters lateral to the midline on each side. Then, the distance between the nasion and the most superior point of the corrugator origin is 18.7 millimeters. So, when we look closely at that, this gives us a landing zone of, on average, 8.9 millimeters. So that's 18.7 millimeters, the highest point of the corrugator origin, minus 9.8 millimeters, the average height of the inferior most point of the corrugator origin. Um, so we're rough, we've roughly got a landing zone there of just under a centimeter in terms of our injecting an injection point when treating the medial corrugator. I want you to look uh, using this image at how this landing zone relates to surface anatomy and specifically the brow. You know, why not draw this out using these numbers on on yourself, on one of your patients, and how does this look in terms of your current practice with injecting of the medial corrugator? My own experience is that oftentimes injectors, if they're off, are placing toxin slightly too high in this area, which can be problematic because it can increase the risk of medial browtosis because of inadvertent effect on the lower fibers of frontalis. So basically where we're going above the uh, uppermost point of the origin of the corrugator, therefore potentially having an effect on frontalis fibers and giving us this medial brow twist or slightly oiled appearance that sometimes um, patients talk about. So I find these numbers uh, and, and details really useful 
And I'd like to combine my knowledge of this with palpating or feeling the muscle in this area while the patient is making a frown and feel the muscle contracting. Use the numbers and what you're feeling to guide your injection point. Remember the injection here should be deep as the muscle is located on the medial bony orbit. Okay, so now let's look at the lateral portion of the corrugator or its insertion. So the average distance between the nasion and the most lateral point of the corrugator insertion is 43.2 millimeters. With the average distance between the nasion and its most inferior portion from inferior to superior or caudal to cephalic being 21.9 millimeters and 32.6 millimeters to its most superior point. That gives us a landing zone laterally of just over of just over a centimeter or 10.7 millimeters and I that's been deduced by subtracting the uppermost point um, relative to the nasion being 32.6 millimeters relative to the inferior portion being 21.9 so 32.6 minus 21.9 gives us this 10.7 millimeter landing zone in this area remember the corrugator is very superficial it's basically stuck to the skin so we've got to keep our injections very superficial and so knowing these numbers will help us. I like to combine that then with looking at the patient making a frown. Look at the visible tugging of the patient's skin laterally where you can see this little comma forming where these lateral fibers are pulling on the skin allowing a frown to be made and allow that along with this knowledge to very specifically guide your injection points to maximize outcomes and minimize complications. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, hit like, subscribe and share to see a bit more.